You know what I, I, I was saying? I, I, I come from this line of uh, musicians, uh, father, grandfather, and uh, we're kind of like the box, but it without such good tunes or powdered wigs. <laughs> My grandfather was a ship's musician on the White Star and he sailed uh, to America for a good 10 years and uh, back and forward, which was another trip that an Irishman like him uh, took in both directions very often. And uh, he played the cornet and the trumpet and the French horn and uh, things were going pretty good for him. He, he kind of had a double-breasted camel hair coat and a fedora and, a, and a, looked pretty sharp. Came home and gave my grandmother a cloche hat and a fox fur which was a shock to all the people that live in Cathcart Street in Birkenhead, because the fox is still alive. <laughs> Did a little bit of minor smuggling uh, and, and set up pretty good until, uh, like everywhere, the depression hit, and even on the big liners, where they were used to sailing up and down with the Dukes and the Earls and the Duke of Earl, um, and the robber barons and tycoons. They even, eventually, they, uh, they Somebody stuck a pin in their balloons of brandy and 1932 came around and the White Star Line got into settling torch and they cut the liner in half in mid-Atlantic. <laughs> and the half that contained the Dukes and Earls and the Duke of Earl sailed on to New York and the half that contained the musicians floated back to Birkenhead. <laughs> now when my grandfather came ashore he'd been used to doing gigs in between sailings in the uh, in the Argyle Theatre of Birkenhead in the Music Hall, and in the future is on Line Street where they had a full orchestra to accompany the silent films. Because while he'd been away, the newfangled talking pictures had come in. Now, I've been accused occasionally of being angry. <laughs> but these, this is only by people who have never met my grandmother. <laughs> that was a woman that could hold a grudge. <laughs> Until her dying day, she held Al Jolson, personally responsible <laughs> for putting her grandfather out of work. <laughs> she wasn't keen on much else about them either. <laughs> anyway, this is song puts me in mind at that time, and it's about a, a Jimmy Rogers impersonator who was traveling the English musical theaters around about that time. And he's chosen just the one moment to go into cowboy music. That's if there was ever a right moment. <laughs> Third class ticket in his pocket, punching down the shadows underneath the socket. Tweet coat turned up against the far. Slow coaches rolling over the wall between the very memory and approaching the fall. Stay a bread curling on a punching cabin. This change rolling up the right amount. The cut man, in a different nation, waiting on a platform at a black issue station. Somebody's calling you again, the sky is falling, Jimmy stands in the rain. Nobody wants to buy a counterfeited prairie lullaby in the collier of town. Of some stage, not Joseph's feet is all you get now. Eyes going in and out of focus, smiled in and bitter, tuberculosis, forgotten man, indifferent nation, waiting on a platform at a black issue station. Somebody's calling you again, it's finally dawning, Jim is standing in the rain. And then walks the hands around the brazier. 
Jealous, dead, and afraid. 